Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hogue, author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program. Learn English with me. Oh. <laughs> Something just broke on my uh, microphone. Hmm. Beep. Welcome. Today's show, Ask Coach AJ. That's me. Ask Coach AJ. So today I'm answering questions. Answering questions from my Twitter account. What's my Twitter? My Twitter is my name, AJ Hogue. Let's see, maybe I can put it up here. Let's put it up here on the screen, my Twitter. Do, 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 do. So Twitter is just, uh, they use the little at symbol, at AJ Hogue. Easy. See it right there. We'll stick it over here. All right, that's my Twitter, at AJ Hogue. You can ask me questions on Twitter anytime you want. Send me a message. Just put that in your uh, in your reply, in your tweet. You put at AJ Hogue at the beginning, and then I'll see it. And then I'll reply to you. Okay, so, asking Coach AJ, let's go. <laughs> All right, go into my Twitter here. Let's see what we got. Aha. AJ, can you do a book club show about the books of Henry David Thoreau? I know he is your favorite author. Oh, that's nice. Uh, you know, maybe. I'll have to think about that. The problem with um, Henry David Thoreau is that his writing style is very, very difficult for most English learners. He wrote back in the 1800s, a very formal style of writing, meaning kind of long and fairly complicated sentences, a more formal and therefore a more difficult type of vocabulary. Most English learners find his books quite difficult, but I could maybe do it. We'll see, I'll think about that one. But I do love his books, Thoreau's great. And the same person on Twitter, Bao, says, I love all of your pics and videos on Instagram. They are so wonderful. Aha, Instagram. I'm on Instagram now. I'm going to put that on the screen too. Instagram, follow me on Instagram. I'm sharing videos. I'm doing live videos on Instagram, just playing around, all kinds of things. Now, my Instagram is different. All right, my, this is my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram and you can see some, I do, of course I do photos on Instagram, but I also do videos on Instagram, including live videos. So my Instagram is uh, Effortless English Club. Can you see it there? Mm -hmm. There. <laughs> Effortless English Club. That's my Instagram. Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. All right, our next question. This is an interesting one from Om Neya. Om Neya. Dear Coach AJ, my question. How to have strong confidence and not affect about others' opinions? Ah, I see. Not be affected by others' opinions. Well, I just did a whole video about this. Right? I call it, it's called Overcome Your Fear. Overcome Your Fear. You can find it on my blog, EffortlessEnglishClub.com, or my YouTube channel, which is my name, AJ Hogue. This is very important. See, as I said in the video, this was yesterday's Effortless English show, that most people, they don't try to live their dreams. They don't try to take a chance and be happy and do what they really want to do in life because they're afraid. Right? They're afraid of failure or they're afraid of other people's opinions. That's what this question is about. They're, they're 
too worried about what other people think, that other people will laugh at them, that other people will criticize them, that other people will not like what they're doing. I mean, so many things. It's just, um, it's sad. And for that reason, they won't do it. They won't start their business. They won't change their job to something they love. They won't go travel. They won't go live abroad. They won't do whatever it is. They won't try to be an artist or a musician. Whatever it is they really want to do, they don't do it because they're afraid of other people's opinions. This is a tragedy. It's sad. It's so, so sad to make your life unhappy because of what other people think. So how do you not do this? Well, the first step is really to realize that this is crazy. This is crazy, that it's your life. It's not their life, it's your life. They can make their own choices. You are responsible 100% for your life. You're not responsible for anyone else, unless you have children. <laughs> so no other adults, for sure. You're not responsible for them. They make their decisions. They live their lives how they want to. So you let people do that. So the first step is don't focus on other people and what they do. Don't criticize them. Let them do what they want. Even if you don't like what they're doing, you don't agree, doesn't matter. In fact, encourage other people. Encourage other people to live their dreams, which might be very different than yours. Encourage them to do it. Because, you know, maybe they're also afraid of your opinion or others' opinions. So be positive. Encourage other people. That's a good first step. Because as you encourage other people, you'll start to realize, well, I need to do this too. I need to encourage myself. And that's the second part, is just to be responsible for your own life. 100% responsible. No one else is. No one else is going to solve your problems for you. No one else is going to make you happy. No one else is going to decide for you in the best way. You have to do these things. Only you are responsible for your own life, so you must do this. Live for what's most deeply important to you. You've got to find that and live that. And, you know, in terms of the practical, like how, how exactly do you do this? You do it in small steps. If, if right now you're really afraid and nervous about other people's opinions all the time, well, you just take a first step. What's, what's, what's the first small thing you can do that's different, that is important to you? Do something small first, and if other people criticize, Practice ignoring them. Practice telling them. Doesn't matter what you think. This is my life. Then make another small decision and another small decision. And then little steps, little steps, you start moving towards your dreams. The life you want. That's my best advice and my best answer for that question. <clears throat> Emmanuel says, hi, my dear master, I'm considering getting the real English course since I finished Power English and the original course. Good for you. Good job. Do you recommend it? And what is the difference between the two? Yes, I do recommend the real English course. It's, it's learnrealenglish.com if you're interested. Learnrealenglish.com. Now, the Learn Real English course is fairly advanced. It has a lot of more casual English. It has idioms, and it's the lessons are to help you understand real conversations. So they use, there's two teachers at least. There's three of us at LearnRealEnglish.com. It's myself, me, and my friends, my very good friends, Kristen and Joe. So all the lessons uh, have at least two of us on the lessons, and all three of us do the whole course. So you can hear two people talking to each other, two Americans talking to each other using very natural English. So it's a little bit advanced, it's a little bit more difficult, but I highly recommend it. So yes, try it.
All right. AJ, how do you, Coach AJ, this is from Reef. How do you stay motivated? Well, there's a good quote about motivation. I can't remember who said it. I think it was Jim Rohn, uh, an, a motivational speaker, kind of an, an old motivational speaker. He, he's died. He, he has, he's dead. Um, but there, you can find his videos on YouTube still. And I think it was him that said, motivation is like brushing your teeth or taking a bath or eating. You need to do it every day. It's an everyday habit. And I think some people have the idea of motivation or inspiration that it's something you just do once really strong. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to learn English. Yes, yes. Ah. And you do it and then you, you get excited and you, you start studying more and you're doing a good job. You feel energetic and maybe for one week, maybe for two weeks. And then, then it starts going down, right? Going down. You start getting bored. You start getting tired. It starts dropping, 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 dropping. And I think, what happened? What's wrong? I was motivated. Now I'm not. Well, what's wrong is that you have to do this every day, right? Just like you eat. You eat every day, right? You don't eat one time, big meal, rah, eat a lot. And then the next two weeks, don't eat. And then you say, why am I hungry again? <laughs> well, it's because you have to eat regularly. Same with brushing your teeth, right? You brush your teeth every day. Keep them clean. Take a bath. You wash yourself. You, right? If you don't do these things, then you get dirty again. Well, it's the same thing with motivation. If you don't motivate yourself, and if you don't get motivation, then you naturally will lose it. It's something you have to build. It's a habit. So how do you do this? Well, you do things like listening to motivational videos, motivational podcasts. I mean, this is why I try to give you a lot of motivation in my audios and videos because I know one time is not enough. You need it every day. You need it every single day. It's, it's also like exercise, right? You can't just exercise one time per month and think you will have better fitness. You won't. It's not enough. You've got to exercise regularly. And the best kind of exercise is when you can do it every single day, at least, you know, walk and jog or something like that every single day. So it's a habit. Motivation is a habit. So make it a habit that every day you listen to something that motivates you, that inspires you. Listen to my podcast and these videos, and you can find others as well. There's many, there are many. You can read books that are motivational to you. Make it an everyday habit. That's how you keep your motivation high. Oh, we have some people talking about the World Cup on my Twitter. First game, Russia beats Saudi Arabia. Sorry, Saudi Arabia. Keep going. Don't be too sad. You have at least two more games. Russia, <claps> woohoo! Congratulations. Very strong first game for the hosts. Excellent. So good luck to Russia in their next two games as well. As you can see, I'm wearing my Japan jersey because I'm supporting Japan in this World Cup. Some people ask me, AJ, why not the United States? Well, if you are following the World Cup, you already know the answer. The United States is not in the World Cup this year. They did not qualify. Their team's not very good. <laughs> so I cannot support America this year because they didn't make it. So I chose Japan. That's where I'm living right now. That's where I am right now. I'm in Japan. I'm in Osaka, Japan right now. So Japan's my team this year. I, you know, I also uh, Brazil. I support Brazil. You know, Spain's great. I, you know, I, we have effortless English members in many, many countries. So I'm supporting, I'll support lots of teams. But my first one is Japan this, this time. Okay, now this is an interesting question from Ali. Do you have any advice for feeling shy when speaking English? Especially about pronunciation. I cannot pronounce, or I have trouble pronouncing, the letters S and Z. I think it might be a medical problem. Makes me feel shy. How can I overcome this? I'm 31, and I studied English. Okay, well, 
if it's really a medical problem, if you can't, if there's nothing you can do about it, if there's, you know, some issue with, you know, with your mouth or your throat or something and you just, uh, your tongue and there's nothing you can really do, well, then you just have to let go. <laughs> okay, you just have to let go and stop worrying about it. The important thing is, you're not, you know, here's the thing about, you know, when you're speaking English, for example, and the thing about pronunciation in general, do you want to have a clear accent, as clear as possible? Yes, you do. Why? Why? This is the next question, the important question. Why? People people think it's about, you know, uh, being, you know, impressing other people, having a high status or some, something like that. No, it's just so you are understood. That's, that's the reason. The, the reason you try to improve your pronunciation is so that you are more understandable to more people. Okay, so it's not that it's not one accent is wrong and another one is correct and good. So if you have a French accent, it doesn't mean that, that it's a bad accent. Because even in the United States, there are several different kinds of accents. You know, there's a Southern accent, there's a New York accent, there's a Boston accent, there's a Southern California accent, and then there's the standard accent, which is mine. Uh, is, does that mean the Southern accent is bad? No, I grew up in the South. I used to have a Southern accent when I was a, a child. I like the Southern accent. I think it's wonderful, but, but... I do not recommend that you learn it. Why? Because it's less understandable to most people. People in the South understand it very well, but people in other areas might not understand it as easily. So that's the reason to focus on the standard accents. Standard really just means the most common, the most popular, the accent that the m most people know and use. So the standard American accent is the accent that most Americans understand and know and use. It's kind of the Midwest, the middle part of the country accent. And it's the accent that you'll hear most actors using, most of the newscasters using, most of the radio people using. It's that standard American accent. And the British have their own version of this, a standard British accent. And also in the UK, they, they also have many different accents, right? There's the Cockney accent and I don't know, well, within the UK, then there, there's the Scottish accent. I'm sure there's a Welsh accent. And you know, like a strong Scottish accent is difficult for me to understand if it's very strong. However, the standard British accent is very, very, very easy for me to understand. I'm not British, but it's super easy to understand. It's very clear because it's common. I have heard it in many different movies uh, and on the internet, so I've heard it a lot. It's very clear and common. So that's why the standard accents are important. So, like with this question, if you have one sound that's very difficult for you, uh, you know, the important thing is that people can understand you. They understand what you're saying. They understand, um, you know, what you're trying to communicate. So you might have to, if you have a medical problem, you can't change this. You might have to try to do other things to make your speech more understandable. Now, many words, they will still understand you because it will be obvious what the word is. Like if you say, um, I see you, right? I see. If you say, I see you, which is a wrong pronunciation. It's more like a Z sound. If you say, I see you, which sounds maybe a little German, even, even like a German accent, people probably will understand you because Z is not, a, is not a word. And from the situation, they can probably understand what you're saying, even if you don't pronounce it. 100% correctly. Now, one way I make myself more understandable, if I'm traveling, maybe I travel different parts of the world, people don't understand English m much. Use gestures. You have to use your body language. So if you say that, you know, the word see, you know, do something like this, you know, like you put your fingers with your eyes, point at your eyes. Something simple like that get, just helps a little bit more with understanding, the person will understand, they'll, they'll understand, ah, oh, yeah, see, see, they're just talking about his eyes, see, right? So, you know, pointing and using your gestures, you can even carry a notepad and you could 
write a word. So if someone's not, a, if you're saying a word, they don't understand what you're saying. Z, 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 and then, huh? 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 Well, you can always just get, if you have a little notepad with you or your phone, you can type it on your phone or write it on the notepad, just write out S E E, C. Ah, and they go, ah, C, right. And then they keep going. So communication is the goal, right? Not to look good. It's not about looking good and people think, oh my gosh, you're so great. No, it's just about communicating clearly. And if you do have some kind of problem that stops you from pronouncing something correctly, or or maybe you're just lower level, maybe you're only a high beginner now or low intermediate. So your pronunciation might not be so good your grammar might not be very good. You, your vocabulary might be quite small. Just do your best. Communicate. You know, again, use a notepad. Use short sentences. Speak slowly. Use body language. Do all of these things to make your communication more understandable. That's the thing to do. So don't 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 make it about ego. A lot of people with pronunciation, it's about their ego. Like, ah. Oh. Yes, I do. I need to sound perfect. No, no, it's just you need to sound clear, very clear. That's why you work on it, because it makes your communication easier. Next question. Where can I find the free podcasts? Is there an, op an application for that? Please tell me. Okay, this is uh, Samira. Okay, Samira. Uh, well, so as you know, you know this Effortless English show is on video and audio both. The video is on my YouTube, which is AJ Hogue, A-J-H-O-G-E. Also, the video is always on my blog, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. You go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com, go to the blog, look in the menu, go to the blog, and you'll, you'll see all my videos. So if you want to watch the Effortless English show, Go to my blog. That's the easiest way. But there's also the audio-only podcast. So the podcast, it's the same show, but you get extra stuff. If you listen on the audio podcast, I give you more, more shows. There's, there are extra shows on the audio that you do not get on video. That's one advantage of the audio show. And also, some people just prefer some people want to listen it's because you know they can they can listen while they drive but they can't watch a video audio can be more convenient sometimes so how do you uh listen to the audio podcast for free well it's there it's free it's always free apps here are the apps i recommend so what you do is you if you're listening on your phone you can you just get a, a podcast app that's all you need it's just a fr they're they're free Get a free podcast app. There are many. There are many, many, many podcast apps. If you just, if you have Android, you could go to the Google Play Store, just search podcast apps, many of them, okay? Um, but I'll, I'll tell you, my favorite right now is TuneIn. TuneIn. I'll put this on the screen. Let me just type it up. TuneIn, I think, is the good one because it, they have apps for, like, every device. The TuneIn podcast app, they have... Uh, uh, they have apps for window they have apps for amazon like the alexa the voice thing they have apps for android they even have apple apps um they have apps for the for, for cars if you want to listen while you're driving and even more right they have lots and lots of apps so you can just go uh, again in the android store or the apple store just you can type in tune in which i'm going to write it on the screen now if you're watching on video I'll spell it for the audio listeners. But if you're an audio listener, you're probably already listening to this. So you already know. Okay, so there it is up in the right-hand corner, top right. Tune in, the Tune In app. So the Tune In app, you install, you download it, put it on your phone or your device. Then just there'll be a search inside the app. Just search Effortless English Podcast. Effortless English Podcast. Search. It'll come up. Just push the button to subscribe. Subscribe to the podcast in the app. And then you will automatically get every new show in the app after that. So tune in. The app is tune in. If you're an Apple user, of course, you probably know already. You just use iTunes. Same thing. iTunes. Go to podcasts in iTunes. 
And again, search the same thing, Effortless English Podcasts. You can listen in iTunes. But everybody else who's not using Apple, tune in is probably the best one. Get their app. Oh, and by the way, I should tell, say that, you know, one of the cool things I'm doing now, just started doing it this week on my uh, audio podcast. I'm doing something called The Walk and Talk. Walk and Talk. It's an extra show. One hour, usually. An extra show. Extra English listening for you. And it's only audio. There's no video. Why is it called Walk and Talk? Because every day I walk to work. I usually do my work in a coffee shop. And it's about, it's a little over a one hour walk. So what I decided to do, I carry an audio recorder with me and I talk about different sub subjects, different topics. Just anything, any casual conversation, any casual topic, anything that's interesting to me. Sometimes people on Twitter recommend topics. Sometimes it, something just pops in my head. I talk about my daily life. I talk about walking around Japan. I talk about travel, anything. Talk about the weather sometimes, just to get just to give you some extra vocabulary about daily life and travel and things like that. So I tried it, and on Twitter, everybody's telling me, "Oh, we like it. This is really great. Keep doing it. Keep doing it." So I'm, I will continue to do it. So even if you usually watch the show on video, if you want extra, if you want these walk and talk audios, then again, you should get get the audio app, get the TuneIn app, and uh, or get iTunes and follow the podcast also. All right, let's see what else is happening on my Twitter. Oh, okay, I, I can do this. Um, how to pronounce it? Uh, he's saying, oh, I, hi, I am Ali from Algeria. Can you greet me in your video? Hi, Ali from Algeria. All right, and uh, lots of action happening on Instagram. My Instagram just, I, j I finally got an account this week. <laughs> People have been asking me about Instagram for, I don't know, a few years probably. I just never did it, never did it. And uh, I finally got an account. Unfortunately, there are many, many, many fake accounts with using my name and using my face on Instagram. So you must be careful. Follow me on Instagram, but be careful. Follow the correct one. And the correct one is Effortless English Club. Effortless English Club on Instagram. That's me. Everybody else is fake if they're using my name. Effortless English Club. You, you'll see because it'll be some of my videos and things. Some stuff people can't copy. Ah, Dave. Dave who's been doing, sending me videos, showing me his uh, English practice. So great job. And also Anderson in Brazil has been doing the same thing. They, they're doing walk and talks also. They're, they, you're, they're doing videos where they talk in English, practicing English, talking about things, showing you know where they're walking. It's really fantastic. And they're sharing these with me and with all of the Effortless English family on Twitter. So congratulations to both Dave and Anderson for doing that. And uh, Dave says... Uh, for sure, we're going to listen to your podcast. Dear AJ, you have an awesome accent. Well, thank you. Keep it up, please. I wish that everyone would speak like you, but unfortunately, they don't. <laughs> yes. But, you know, if you feel bad, if you if you hear an accent or something and you, it's difficult for you, just remember that this can happen to me. As I said, um, like there's some, some accents are also difficult for me. Like even native speakers, there are some accents that are very tough. If you if you don't know it, if it's a very strong accent, it can be difficult to understand. You know, I, I use the Scottish example. That's a good one because uh, I remember when that movie Train Spotting came out. Strong Scottish accents in the movies, and many Americans said, oh, "I can't understand what they're saying." Or they had trouble understanding the characters in the movie because the Scottish accents were too strong. Some people say, you know, they, they have trouble with a New York accent. I understand a New York accent, but, uh, but it, you know, I understand why some people would not. Uh, and the, so it's, it, that's totally normal. Don't, so don't get, don't worry if sometimes you don't understand some certain, certain accent or accents because it's a normal situation. Okay.
More talk about the World Cup. Lots of World Cup chats and talks on my Twitter. Looking forward to the next game. I think this is, uh, this is Alexei, who I'm guessing is a Russian and Russian fan, because he looks like he's excited that they won. <laughs> so, congratulations to the Russians. There's a host country. They need to win at least a game, right? And then right after that, we have a Saudi fan who's sad. Sorry. <laughs> Here's another Saudi fan saying it was one of the worst games I've ever seen. <laughs> it's hard to accept the results. Oh, I know, I know. I'm laughing because, you know, I'm American. So the American team, they usually do badly. I mean, this year, they're not even in the World Cup because they did so badly. But even when they go to the World Cup, you know, many they're fighting just to get out of the group stage. Uh, if, if we win a game, if we get out of the group, you know, that's great. But we're often disappointed. So I understand, you know, only one team can win. So no point getting too sad about losing because by the end of the tournament, every team will lose except one. <laughs> right? They'll be, just be the last team. And then we have the Brazilians of, who are very happy because, of course, they have a strong World Cup team, as always. Speaking of, oh, there's something else I want you to do. So this is Anderson. Anderson Galbao, who is Brazilian, as you can see the flag there. And he's wearing his Brazilian shirt, his Brazilian jersey, this is called. So, uh, hey, if you want to, send me a picture of you wearing your Brazilian jersey or uh, Senegal jersey or Spanish jersey, whatever your team is, whatever team you are supporting in the World Cup this year, take a picture, take a selfie wearing it. So I'm wearing my Japanese one right now, right? And uh, send it to me on Twitter or send it or tag me on Instagram, tag Effortless English Club on Instagram, and I'll see it. And, I'll, you know, we can share it. So it's just fun. No reason. Just fun. So if your country is not in the World Cup, maybe you're not. Like maybe like me, your country did not make it. So, you know, do you have a favorite? Is there another country you're supporting? What's your favorite team? If you have the jersey, send it to me. Or sometimes people have this little scarf, you know, with the team. So send your pictures to me with the team colors of your World Cup team. Okay, that is the end of our Ask Coach AJ show. Enjoy the World Cup. In fact, in 30 minutes, I will do a live stream on Instagram during the Egypt and Uruguay game. So, you can follow me on Instagram. I'll do a few live streams during some of the games, just talk about the game, maybe teach a little soccer vocabulary. So if you like during the World Cup, you can follow me on Instagram and look for my live videos. Send me your questions at on my Twitter account, AJ Hogue. And as always, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program, Learn English with me at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Oh, and good luck to your World Cup team. See you next time.